director of ECHO, and we are so glad to have you here. Um, we have, so let's see, who's traveled the furthest? We have somebody from Humboldt, right? Humboldt, yay, Humboldt. Anyone, anyone advance me on Humboldt? Where are you from? Arizona, okay, so this is now a, a national conference. <laughs> Anyone can do any better than Arizona? Connecticut, woo, East Coast. All right, advances on Connecticut. England, <laughs> 27 years ago, but it might still count. Was, this, was there another hand up here? DC, yay for the East Coasters. Scotland, oh. gotta hear it for Scotland. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna actually behave myself now and get up on the podium where I'm supposed to be. Um, so uh, keep on coming in, please come in. We've got lots and lots of seats. We've got lots and lots of seats because sadly, most people don't understand what we're on about when we're talking about community evidence practices. You probably don't understand either. You probably like, oh, I don't know, my boss just sent me, I've got no idea why I'm here. Um, what, are we, what are we doing here? Who is ECHO? Well, ECHO is a survivor-led, survivor-focused, survivor-centric nonprofit where we teach people about the impact of trauma on the body and the physical brain. And we also uh, talk about resilience. Because one thing I am fed up of is every time we talk about trauma survivors, they, they expect us to be wringing our hankies. And there's this whole image of, you know, somehow it, it's distasteful because somehow it feels weak or something. Well, we're here because we believe in survivor wisdom. We believe that survivors know all about trauma and have spent the rest of their lives trying to figure out how to recover from it. So uh, we are the experts. And we also believe that anybody who comes into the caring professions, pretty good chance that you have a trauma background too. In fact, when we do our trainings and we do the ACES questionnaire, you know, uh, the national figures are something like 63% have had some kind of adverse childhood experience. When we do our trainings, it's in the 90s, 90-something percent of people in our trainings have had some kind of trauma background. So I'm pretty sure that most of you sitting here have experienced some kind of trauma. So welcome, because we're here to serve you. We're here to be the enlightened witnesses in your journey. And we've done everything we can to make this the best possible conference for you guys. So I'm really hoping that you enjoy it and you get a lot of benefit from it. Um, right, so a few housekeeping details. Uh, you've all found breakfast, that's a good start. Um, you see these beautiful centerpieces? Uh, this was uh, the Echo team who put this together over many hours, bloodied fingers. Um, the tags on there, we put some words on there to kind of start you off, but the tags on there are really for the fruit of this conference. So whatever you feel the fruit of your experience at this conference is, we'd love you to write a word and hang it on the tree. So then it becomes your centerpiece. Um, we are very much of the opinion that survivors can be empowered, that we can resolve our trauma. And yet we know that some of the themes that come up when we're discussing trauma, sometimes they can activate us. Sometimes we need a little quiet time. So. If you do feel like you need to just be quiet somewhere, uh, the room over here called Joshua Tree, that's set aside as our self-care room. So please feel free 
to go sit in there, to go journal, to lie on the floor, whatever you need to do. Um, one one um, unfortunate announcement to make, um, for those of you who wanted to go to Sophia um, Dance from the Heart workshop, uh, there was a family medical emergency, so she couldn't be here. So um, poor old Lindsay, who you might have met outside, she spent her whole weekend going back through everybody's workshop selections, and so she's given you whatever your other choice was, whatever your second choice was. So I know that's going to be confusing, but we have the list out in the front there. So anyone who'd signed up for Dance from the Heart workshop, you can go and ask Lindsay and consult the list and see which workshop you're now in. And you know, um, on the back of your badge here, we stole this idea. We went to a conference and we saw them do this and we thought, that's a great idea. So uh, of course now it's all wrong. <laughs> but so. Would you bear with me? Would you pull out your schedule? Because I'm going to ask you to write the new schedule. Because Lindsay's there to help, but if 150 people all descend on her at once, it's going to be a bit difficult. So um, on your, on your um, outline here, uh, where it says, uh, Dance from the Heart, that was supposed to be in Redwood. That is now Inkem's workshop, which is Trauma Healing Foundations with the Resilience Toolkit. So next to Trauma Healing Foundations with the Resilience Toolkit, can you cross out Catalina and put Redwood? Is everyone tracking with me so far? It's early in the morning, I know. And then in the afternoon, um, you'll see you'll see um, wise the wise body yoga for trauma recovery that was originally in Mojave. If you can cross out Mojave, that is now in Redwood. Are we all square? We all got that. I'm very square, but um, are we all are we all sorted? Yes, I like this lady. She laughs at my jokes. <laughs> you are allowed to laugh. I know it's a trauma conference, but you are allowed to laugh, okay? A um, couple of other announcements. Uh, if you do go to the workshop and it's full, please give priority to the people who've signed up. There'll be a list outside. That's just the polite thing to do. Please come on in. There's lots of seats. Come on in. I'm just talking boring housekeeping stuff, so don't worry. You're not disturbing anyone. Um, and then the other thing is uh, we always prepare to have vegetarian and vegan food. And then people go down the line. They're like, oh, I'll have one of these, and I'll have one of these, and I'll have one of these, and I'll have one of these. And then all the vegetarians are like, where's my food? So we're going to have them. Uh, on, on this side where your coffee is, that's where the vegetarian food is. So let the vegetarians and the vegans help themselves first. And then after everyone's helped themselves, for sure, if you want to come back and have one, feel free. But um, we're just going to let them serve themselves first. All right, so that's, so that's the housekeeping stuff. Um, we have a special treat for you this morning. And uh, I'm not going to say anything more, because I think everyone's here. So uh, we have a little video that we're going to show you. How are we doing, Ridden? Are we ready to go? Yep. All right. So let's go with Don't Silence Me. You don't make a sound Oh, please, make him stop But I don't want to lose my job Oh, oh, don't silence me What if they see you like Felt obliged to cross the line Too late to ask for help To say she bought it on herself Oh, oh, don't silence me Your hands off my seat. 
sister. Didn't you hear her say no? Talk, just shake it off and take a walk. Now man hangs around the bullies of the playground. Ooh, ooh, don't silence me. We're all complicit, and this is how we do business. Hey, hey, NDA. No, I've got nothing more to say. Ooh, Some of the people who were in that video are here today. Um, let's give them a round of applause. And the reason I wanted to honor them is because this video was completely done on a volunteer basis. The entire cast and crew gave up their time to create this video. And I'm going to ask Mari to explain a little bit more about how this came into being. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. Thanks, Louise. This video came into being, um, well, I was sexually assaulted at the beginning of my acting career in France 17 years ago and by a, a very well-known French film director. And I had spent the last year and a half wondering whether or not to come forward with his name publicly. It was a very challenging decision and it, it, it uh, took up a lot of my headspace <laughs> trying to work this out. And uh, one of my good friends is a singer-songwriter called Sadie Jamet, and she wrote this song for me called Don't Silence Me. And she had a small bit of money to put into the project and then I fundraised through a GoFundMe type campaign for the rest of the, of the money. And um, so with our budget, we created this video that has over 45 women a lot of them are survivors of sexual assault or sexual harassment. And we shot it in Los Angeles in a studio and then also during the Women's March. And we premiered it two weeks ago here in LA and it's online. If you like it, please find it. We're on Facebook, <laughs> don't silence me. And basically I wanted, this for two, I wanted to make this for two reasons. One, I really want to celebrate the tenacity and the courage of survivors. And secondly, I wanted this video to be a conversation starter about how things can change for us. Thank you. Thank you, Mari. 
so, um, so that I don't mangle everybody's name, I'm going to ask everyone just to introduce themselves. Good morning, everybody. My name is Joanne Chu. Thank you for having me. Hi, my name is Annette Salzman. It's great to be here. Thank you. Hi, I'm Leah Civoli, and really honored to be here today with you all. Hi, I'm Con Barrett, and thank you all for being here. Hi, I'm Maria Mastrianis, and it was a great honor to be part of this great project. Thank you, Mari. Thank you very much. My name is Mari Morrison, and I'm very grateful to Louise for inviting us here. Good morning. My name is Stephanie Kiefer. Good morning. My name is Virginia Linden. It's a privilege to be here and to be part of this. Thank you, guys. My name is Jennifer Emmett, and I wanted to thank you. I'm one of the survivors. Thank you so much, ladies. So, um, Mari is going to be here, and some of the others, these brave ladies, brave mostly for standing up here at the beginning of the conference and like, oh, I don't know what we're supposed to do. Um, they're going to be here, so please come and chat to them. Mari is going to be hosting a little Don't Silence Me booth, so you can get a chance to write the word that has silenced you and put that on and take a photograph for social media. So that will be set up in the courtyard because so many of us have been silenced, right? And uh, whether it's um, sexual violence, whether it's something, a trauma that happened during our childhood, um, whether we've been silenced through homophobia, white supremacy, um, whatever it is, we all of us have had that feeling of loss of agency and control and, uh, and it impacting us, harming us physically or emotionally. I really wanted to do that because uh, we got to put the heart in this, right? Um, we have people coming to us to learn how to be trauma informed and we say, why do you want to be trauma informed? Well, um, you know, it's another skill for me professionally or well, you know, all the federal grants are requiring that we're you know, trauma-informed. I'm like, no, no, that's not why you become trauma-informed. If it's not about empowering survivors, then what, what the heck are we doing? We have to put trauma survivors middle and center of everything that we're doing. Can I hear an amen? <laughs> okay, thank you. Um, just want to give you a little kind of clue in to why we're doing this conference. Um, if you've been to any of our trainings, then you know that we talk about how trauma impacts the body and the brain. And we also talk about how to reverse those things. In fact, we've already got a bunch of trainings that look specifically at that CRIM, which is all about um, you know, grounding, tracking skills, and then our yoga. Bibiana is here. She'll be doing um, the yoga workshops, but we also have a one-day training. And then we've also got Dr. Kate, who's going to be doing Havening, and she's going to be uh, starting in April doing one-day trainings for us as well. So this is something that we've been really um, pushing to the forefront for a long time, understanding that trauma is experienced in the body. And Trauma is stored in the body. So it makes sense that you would use the body to reverse those, cha those changes, right? Makes sense, logically. Unfortunately, the, in the mainstream, the go-to, you know, if someone's experienced trauma, is we usually you know, recommend talk therapy or pharmaceuticals. And so this conference was all about, and what else? And what else is there? Because, you know, talk therapy and pharmaceuticals in the history of human development are rather recent developments. And surprise, surprise, we're now finding that human beings had already understood about using the body and reversing the changes in the body. And that, well, who knew? Yoga, which has been going for 4,000 years, a scientist somewhere did a study and then published it in a peer-reviewed journal, and Bob's your uncle, it's an evidence-based practice. 
but it's, it strikes me as somewhat ironic because yeah, it's evidence-based. It's been going for 4,000 years. What better evidence can you have than that? So this conference, we wanted to showcase both things, the new and cutting-edge technologies that are making use of the body to reverse the changes caused by trauma and to create resilience, and also to highlight some of those traditional practices that were kind of pushed aside in the excitement of Prozac or whatever it else, else was developed. Um, if you've been to our trainings, you know that Bessel van der Kolk, The Body Keeps the Score, his book, is uh, something that we draw on a lot. And he talks about trauma, and thanks to Dr. Kate for this quote, but he talks about trauma as uh, something that rearranges the body to believe that the world is a dangerous place. I'm slightly misquoting. But, uh, and he says, you can't talk yourself out of that. So in addition to talk therapy and pharmaceuticals, which I'm not knocking, in certain circumstances, they can be helpful. But let's look at the plethora of other things that we have in order for us to heal.